Praise God, YouTube Christians, let's go. Listen, you gotta, you gotta pause this video, get coffee, do whatever you gotta do. I'm taking my time. The Lord has opened the windows of heaven once again, and I can barely contain it. I'll probably not even be able to teach you this. It's unbelievable. So let me just say, first and foremost, I'm an idiot. I just, I just, oh, I, I say I'm an idiot because of this. I sit there. Now, listen, I could just stand pat. I know the rapture's coming. And by the way, the rapture is guaranteed to come September 24th to September 27th. I'm going to call the shot of September 26th. I'll tell you why in this study. But the Lord has opened the windows of heaven. So the reason I call myself names is because I sit there and I say, Lord, I know you're coming. It, this is Jubilee year. We figured it out. You gave us more information, the whole thing off my last video. And, and in my mind, I'm thinking, well, there's no more new information. So, you know, all we got to do is wait a couple of days. No big deal. Here we are. There's a ton of information, a ton. So God forgive me, on record forgive me. And of course, I've been saying that off camera. The Lord has blessed. Now listen, I have no other way of saying this, but I'm boasting in the Lord. So I'm not boasting in myself. Why God has chosen me to get this juicy information, I don't know. Maybe because I'm willing, maybe because I'm interested in this book and I'm not chasing down names of asteroids and looking for three days of darkness and watching everybody's dreams and visions to see if put the guy, I, I don't know. If you're doing that, God bless you. God bless you. This book is so fascinating. It's brilliant. If I, listen, you gotta, you gotta be in for the long haul. If you're interested in God and his word, stay right here. If you're not, scroll on, leave a comment. Nobody knows the day or the hour. Say whatever you want. I don't care. I don't care. I didn't plan on doing this study. I didn't. So I sit down to dig out Leviticus 25, 9, and God led me on a gold rush trail. I could cry. Oh, God. And listen, I'm in the middle of it right now. I just fired up the camera because I said, Lord, I can't even do it. I cannot put this all together. It's all up here, but it, but it seemed like it would take me hours and days to put it together. Oh, praise God. Unbelievable. So listen, nothing's changed. It's a jubilee year. That's why we're being raptured. Jubilee, never been fulfilled in the Bible. There's no record of the Jews celebrating a jubilee. Do you get that? God told them every 50 years, this is what you're going to do. There's no record of them actually doing it. So this one-time rapture event, this one-time great jubilee is going to be fulfilled at the rapture. So doesn't it make sense that the rapture wouldn't be just on a normal Feast of Trumpets, but it would be a big deal, the Jubilee, a Jubilee year, which C.J. Lovick, Rock Island Books has figured out, Brother Mike Repo Man confirmed it with his timeline. I'm telling you, this is nuts. And if I figured out what I think God led me to, if it means what I think it means that God led me to it, I'm, this is nuts. This is nuts. So this, this may take a while. I'm overwhelmed. I just pushed the button on this camera because it, it's, it's going and going and going and going. Oh, praise God. Okay. Take a breath. Grab your coffee. Leviticus 25.9. Heavenly Father, please help me to do this the way you want me to do it. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Leviticus 25, 9. Then shall you cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the seventh month. 
in the day of atonement shall you make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. This verse is amazing. All right, let me see. Oh, dear God. It has 16 Hebrew words that it took 34 English words to translate the 16 Hebrew words, just to give you an idea of how rich God's language is, the pure Hebrew language. All right, so the, the word, then shall thou cause, then shall thou cause, then shall you cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound. But the first part, then shall you cause, is four times in this verse. It's 5674, and, and the word is aver, aver. That's the Hebrew word, aver. Four times in this verse, it means to pass over, to bring over. It means to vanish. This is our word. This is the rapture. We're going to be brought over, passed over. Please look up the word. It's even more than what I just told you, but I got to keep it tight. To pass over, to bring over, to vanish. It's four times in this verse. Four times. So when we read it, then shall you cause, we don't, we don't even think nothing of that. Then shall you cause a trumpet of the Jubilee to sound. We just think, oh, okay, they're going to blow the trumpet on Jubilee like God told them to. Uh-uh. This is why you got to dig it out. It means everything when you dig it out. Pass over, cross over, bring over. It means to dedicate, to devote, to vanish, to escape. This is what the word means. Then shall you cause. That's what it means. All right, praise God. The trumpet. The trumpet is two times in this verse. Now, wait till you hear what God led me to this. So I'm going to do a basic, and then I'm going to give you like the typology type meaning. Trumpet, 7782. Uh, 72 times, this word is shofar. Shofar, the ram's horn, the trumpet, twice in this verse. Now get this, you got to hold on to this one. Oh, Lord, thank you, Lord, please help me. The root word to shofar is 8231. That's a one-time usage of the word. So the root word is used once, shofar is used 72 times. The root word is shafer. Very similar, shofar, shafer. That's, and it means, look at this. The word means goodly, goodly. Hold on to that. We're gonna circle back to that baby. 8231, it means goodly. Now, shofar means trumpet, ram's horn. This means goodly, to be pleasing, to be beautiful, to make someone beautiful, to make someone fair, to be bright like the sun. This is what the root word of shofar is, goodly, to be made bright, to be made beautiful. This is the rapture. We will be made beautiful, just like Revelation 19. She's shining like the sun. John got so overwhelmed, he fell on his face to worship the angel when he's looking at the Son of Man glorified and the bride of Christ behind him, all on white horses, white linen. We are shining brilliant like the sun because we got glorified bodies. This is the root word to show Far, when the shofar, when this trumpet of the rapture goes off, this is what we're going to be, goodly. Oh, praise God, and still hold on to it. There's more juice to this word. I'm telling you, there's more juice. Oh, praise God. Listen to me. In the Hebrew lexicon, the true meaning of this Hebrew root word, it means 
to shine forth as the dawn, to glisten. It's, it says it's the notion of being bright. And listen, it's also applied to the brilliancy of sound. Now, I never studied the whole sound thing. There's a lot of people into that Christian side of the sound thing. The sound waves and the sound will change us. And, you know, the sound of the voice of the Lord, it, it probably all applies. I've never studied it. I don't know a lot about the frequency stuff, but there it is in this root word. It's also applied to the brilliancy of sound chauffeur, goodly, to be made beautiful. So the, the sound of the voice of the Lord, the trumpet, the trump of God, which is his voice, is gonna change us into brilliancy, into shining. Praise God, this is all Leviticus 25, nine. Oh Lord, and listen, there's cross references to this. Job 26, 13. I can't, I can't do it all. I'm going to try to keep it tight. But the root word, the one-time usage, that is Psalm 16.6. I wasn't even going to look it up. We got to look it up. Psalm 16.6. And remember, Psalm 16, 10, and 11, it only has 11 verses. These are like my two favorite verses. For you will not leave my soul in hell, neither will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. So when Jesus went down and preached to the spirits in the dark prison, God didn't leave his soul in hell, in the heart of the earth, in the grave. That's what it means. Verse 11, you will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Praise God. Look at this. Verse six, the one-time usage for this root word, chauffeur. The lines are fallen to me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. There's the word goodly. And of course, just that word doesn't do it justice, but that's how they translated it. All glory to God. I'm telling you, we're going. Th this is it. We're going. Just forget any negative talk, I don't care what you're going through, you can make it through these next few days. We are going, guaranteed. Praise God. Okay. You shall cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the 10th day. This is going to blow your mind. Jubilee of the jubilee is 8643. This word is teruah. Does that ring a bell? Yam teruah. Teruah. This is the word jubilee right here. It's used 36 times. Okay? Teruah. Oh, Lord, where do I start? Okay, first, first of all, the word teruah means shout for joy, shouting, sounding, rejoicing, blowing, joyful noise. The first time this word teru is used in the Bible is Leviticus 23, 24. Speak to the children of Israel saying in the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall you have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation, blowing, shouting. This is Yom Teruah, right here when God first initiated it, the word Teruah, okay? So here's what God did. He led us to the Feast of Trumpets rapture, and now he's leading us to the Feast of Trumpets combined with the Day of Atonement. Tabernacles comes back to the Day of Atonement, and it's the Jubilee. So he led us to trumpets first with Job 38. So Job 38, seven, I told you is Ruah. They were shouting, rejoicing the sons of God when they watched God create everything on the first day. So that's Isaac. He'll be born at the appointed time in the time of life. The time of life was the first day of creation when they went Ruah, Yom Teruah, Feast of Trumpets, 
jubilee. So God brought us through these steps. Now, listen to me. I, I just got to make sure I get all this. <clears throat> okay, Leviticus 25, 9. It says, then shall you cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the 10th day. That word is teruah for jubilee. Did you know that jubilee is in the Bible 21 more times, and it's a completely different word. It's Yovel, Yovel, 21 more times, 14 more times in Leviticus 25. So Leviticus 10, and you shall hallow the 50th year and proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee to you. Why would God use a different word separated by just a few Hebrew words? He used teruah in nine, and he didn't use teruah for all the rest of the 21. Is this not fascinating? He used the word yovel, which basically means trumpet. I'm telling you, this, this blew me away. I, I got to see if I wrote it down anywhere else. Oh, uh, Lord, please help me put this together. So the rapture is a one-time event. God was telling us literally. Now, we don't have to second guess. Well, do these feast days really combine on a jubilee year? That's what God's telling us. That's what it means. It's teruah in the first one, Leviticus 25.9. Leviticus 25, 10, and the whole rest of Leviticus 25 has 14 more times Jubilee. All Yovel and not Teruah. Because Teruah, God's letting us know, Feast of Trumpets goes into atonements, Tabernacles goes into atonements. And where do you find, oh man, where do you find out what God led me to in the tabernacles? And listen, I don't even know if that's right, but man, it looks right. Okay, praise God. I, I hope you got that. I feel like I didn't do it justice. There's connected words to this. And listen, the root word, by the way, teruah, I told you is 36 times, teruah, it's 8643. The root word is 7321 Ruah. That's the Job 38 7. That's the root word. It's 44 times. 36 plus 44 equals 80. Like there's that generation. A generation is 80 years. I don't know if that's connected. It stood out to me. I'll mention it. So Ruah, the root word, there it is. That's what I was looking for means to shout in triumph, in triumph, victory. It's a shout of victory. So can this word be used to for a war cry and a sound of an alarm? Yeah, it's all of the above. But in context, what are we talking about? Jubilee, a shout in victory. All right, praise God. Let's go. All right, I'm going to set this aside. Listen, I got to take my time. This will be the greatest Bible study I ever had right before the rapture. And I know I've said that before, but this one, I wasn't even expecting, wasn't even planning on this. All right. Basically, I'm breaking down one verse. Then shall you cause the trumpet of Jubilee to sound on the 10th day. Okay, so let me make sure I got this right. Two, okay, listen to this. I told you, then shall you cause. 5674, I told you it's four times in this verse, right? So see, I got to go back to it. Pass over, cross over, bring over, to dedicate, to devote, to vanish, all that. The same word is to sound. To sound is 5674. So it's four times in this verse. So then shall you cause 5674, bring over, pass over, vanish. 
the, the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound. So the sound causes us to vanish. Do you see that? The voice of the Lord, praise God, 5674. So then you scroll down. It says, in the day of atonement, shall ye make, 5674, shall ye make. And the last one, the trumpet to sound, again, sound, 5674. So four times this word is used as sound, ye shall make, sound, and you shall cause to make. So praise God, it's all there. And again, I'm going to put this all together at the end. So let me get through the verse, and then I'm going to give you that typology thing I said. All right. On the, the next word, so then shall you cause the trumpet of Jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the seventh month. Now you would think that word on means nothing. O-N, on, just a simple word to part of a sentence. Well, that word is 2320. 2320 is three times in this verse. So this is where I'm starting to catch up to Brother Mike, Repo Man, and all his, his moon stuff. 2320 is Hodesh. Now, we call it Kodesh, but the K is silent. As far as this, you know, when I sound it out, like I'll give it to you right now. Strong's age, 2320. Hodesh. 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 It is translated month. Okay, month. The root word of this is 2318. It's it's hodash, hodash, actually. So hodash, hodash. And by the way, hodash is 276 times used. It means basically month, but sometimes it does mean new moon. So Brother Mike's got to look at that. It does mean new moon. Hadesh is 10 times the root word. It means to renew or repair. So think, you know, corruption puts on incorruption, the whole thing. To renew mortality puts on immortality. It's all there. But it but it's cool because this word first in the verse is translated on, on, 2320, Hodesh. So let me just say this. There's four Hebrew words for moon. Now, I, I'm not going to pronounce these all right, but Levana, Levana means the white one, talking about the moon, the white moon. So it literally means white one, and it's, and it's used for moon and full moon. And this is the word used in Isaiah 30, 26, by the way. The sun will be seven times hotter and the moon will be as hot as the sun. That's the word used for that verse, Levana. Okay, so three times that's used. That word, Isaiah 30, 26, Isaiah 24, 23, and the songs, Song of Solomon 6, 10. I guarantee there's juice in there. I, I, I looked them up quick, but I couldn't dig it out. Anybody wants to dig that out, go at it. Let's go. Okay, the other one, I'm pretty sure I heard Mike say this, is kase means full moon. Kase, full moon. It's used twice. We're familiar with the Proverbs 720. You know, if the husband went away with a bag of money, he'll come back on the full moon. We try to apply that to the rapture. I think that's the second coming. The second coming will be that full moon. And then, of course, God's going to darken the sky. So the other one is Psalm 81.3. Two times, kase is used. Hodesh, again, 276 times. It means new moon. It's rarely translated new moon, but it is translated new moon, but it's mo it mostly means month. So it makes perfect sense that God said in Hosea 5.7, I'll destroy it. Look, when you translate it in the English, Hosea 5.7 says, I'll destroy you in the month, in the month. Well, that's where we say, oh, the new moon of that month, Feast of Trumpets, which now we know is Jubilee, push to Day of Atonement. So that's Hodesh 
And then Brother Mike's word is Yareak. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Yareak, which is translated a ton of times, and it means moon. It's 3394. So that's the four Hebrew words for moon. We're focusing on 2320, Hodesh, which is three times in this verse. So remember, we got 5674 four times, 2320 three times. We got trumpet two times. That's six words. I told you 16 Hebrew words. So the other 10 words are one time each. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What am I missing? Wait, no, no, no. I added wrong. Four, three, and two is nine. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's the 16 Hebrew words. Let's go. Praise God. Okay. So. Then shall you cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the seventh month in the day of atonement. Now listen, month is translated month, okay? 2320, Hodesh, it means month. 10th is a one-time deal. 7th is a one-time deal. In the day, that's, a, that's, a, that's Yom, right? That's why we get Yom Kippur. Uh, the day of atonement is Kippur, the day of atonement. So that's the Hebrew, Yom Kippur. When you say Yom Kippur, you're speaking Hebrew. All one-time usage, trumpet. Let me just read it one time. Then shall you cause the trumpet of the Jubilee to sound on the 10th day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall you make the trumpet to sound throughout all your land. So at the end, throughout all is its own word. Your land is its own word. Praise God. Let's break it down. Now, listen, I could do every word, but you know what atonement means. This is the rapture. This is Leviticus 25, 9 is the Jubilee rapture that's coming up, which I'm saying is the 26th. Okay, now look at this. Okay, I told you, Aver four times means to pass over, to bring over, to vanish. Why did God put it four times in this verse? Because it's the four corners of the earth, north, south, east, west. It's gonna cover the whole globe. All Christians will be called up in the rapture, all true Christians. That's why it's there four times. Three times the word month is used. Month, think about it. God said on the 10th day, in the seventh month, in the word on, on the 10th day in the, in, of the seventh month. So the word month, hodesh is used three times. I think this is a reference to the Feast of Trumpets, being pushed into the Day of Atonement, tabernacles being pulled back into the Day of Atonement. So these are the three feasts that are in the seventh month. So one, two, three. This is why God used 2323 times. You can disagree, agree. This isn't, you know, I'm telling you, this is what I got in the middle of this study. Two times, this will blow you away. Two times the word trumpet is used. Trumpet is 7782. So did the trumpet, right? I got I gotta remind you, shofar, 72 times, trumpet ram's horn horn. The root word is goodly. So to be pleasing, to be beautiful, all that one time usage, hold on to that. So the root word is applied to the brilliancy of sound. So why two trumpets in this verse? Because 1 Thessalonians 4.16 says, For the Lord himself shall descend with a shout. Revelation 4.1, John said, The first voice I heard was the voice of a trumpet. God's voice is a trumpet. The trump of God is the voice of God, the, the voice of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. For the Lord himself shall descend with a shout. Why? Twice in this verse, this rapture verse, Leviticus 25, 9, because only the voice of the Lord can raise the dead. Think about that. 
blew me away. Only the voice of the Lord can raise the dead. The Lord himself shall descend with a shout. Boom! Out of the graves, he raises the dead. He raises the dead bodies. The dead in Christ rise first. God put trumpet twice in this and the voice of the archangels. So does the voice of the Lord change us? Yeah, probably. It, you know, it applies. But then the voice of the archangel, we hear the archangel after we're changed by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Holy Spirit's already inside of us. And we get called up by the voice of the archangel. So the dead in Christ rise first, that we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air. So the dead in Christ have to be raised. We're not dead. We're not dead. The Holy Spirit's inside of us. So listen, this is deep, deep stuff. If this is true, praise God. I just believe it is. Because again, I sat down and this is where it led. I hope you've seen that. So Four times the four corners of the earth we're going to pass over, bring over. I mean, listen, it means to pull up. It means cross over, bring over, dedicate, devote, vanish, escape. That's what the word means. 5674. Three times is the three feasts combined into one. Trumpets two times. The dead in Christ, those that are alive and remain, and look, it could be the voice of the Lord both times. I'm not saying it just has to be angels, but praise God. Now look look at all the one-time words. Jubilee, Teruah, one time. There's only one rapture. On the 10th day of the seventh month, one time for 10th, one time for seventh. In the day, 3117, one time. Atonement in this verse, one time. Blow it throughout the land, one time for throughout, one time throughout the, the, the land, the word land, throughout the earth. This is a one-time event. Now, look what God did. God made it so Zechariah 12.10 is the fulfillment of the day of atonement for the Jews when they look on him and they mourn as they lost an only son and they finally believe, wow, Jesus of Nazareth, you were our Messiah the whole time. You're God. You, you died for us. You rose for us. Here you are in glory, in power. We believe you. That's the day of atonement, Zechariah 12, 10 for them. So God worked this out in his brilliancy that we are also atoned for on the day of atonement by pushing trumpets to atonement, pulling tabernacles back, bam, right in the middle. It's a jubilee year. Praise God if you're with me. Oh, there's a lot more. There's a lot more. Pray for me right now in real time. Although when you watch this, it'll already be done. <laughs> so Lord, please. Okay, I gotta figure out where I'm going now. This is, uh, so anyway, I started reading back, but listen, I gotta say this. Jubilee in verse nine is Teruah. All the rest of them are Yovel, trumpet, ram's horn, um, even cornet, which is like a trumpet. So God did that on purpose. It's a one-time event, Teruah. So that was the 16 Hebrew words, four, three, two, one, seven times, seven times. So in the 10th day of the seventh month, in the day of atonement, you will blast that trumpet throughout the land and the brilliancy of sound, right? We're holding on to that word. We got to come back to that word, goodly, one-time usage, to be made beautiful, to be made fair, to shine forth as the dawn, the brilliancy of sound is all in that one time word. Praise God. All right, you, you just got to bear with me and give me a minute because I got to get all this out. Okay. All right. Leviticus 23. So I went back to look at the word teruah. The first time teruah is used is when God said, 
you know, these are my fees. Now listen, I got to redo this because people make comments. They probably don't watch the video. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel and say to them, concerning the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. These are God's appointed times with mankind. They were given to Moses to give to Israel, yes, but they're the appointments of God. So then when you go to the very end of Leviticus 25, Well, it's, it's somewhere towards the end. I thought it was in the very end because I just read this. But, he, but again, he says, these are my feasts. These are the feasts of the Lord. Maybe it was 27. Let's do this real quick. I just read it somewhere. It's in here. God reiterates that these are his feasts. So you got to know they're the feasts of God. So I thought that was the end of 25 or 27. You'll be able to find it if you look for it. It doesn't matter because it's right here in Leviticus 23, 1 and 2. These are my feasts. Okay, so Teruah. 23, 24. 23, 23, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, 24, speak to the children of Israel, saying in the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall you have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing, teruah, of trumpets, a holy convocation. So that's the first time teruah is used. And the next time is Leviticus 25, 9, which is translated Jubilee, but all the other Jubilees are not teruah. Clue. Okay, so I'm, I'm just gonna keep reading this. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, also on the 10th day of this seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation to you, a dress rehearsal until the real comes. And you shall afflict your souls an offering and offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. And you shall do no work in the same day, for it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before the Lord your God. And again, God, we're atoned for on the day of atonement. I mean, that's incredible how God does this on a Jubilee year. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. So listen, I'm going to say this real quick. All the people that aren't sure if they're saved and going to make the rapture because of your sin, in a way, that means you're at least afflicted by your sin. You're aware of your sin. It weighs heavy on you. You got the guilt. You feel like you're grieving the Holy Spirit. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. It means you're aware of your sin. So many people out there are not aware of their sin. I'm a Christian. I ain't got to worry about nothing. I don't even sin anymore. You know, whatever their stance is, when you're aware of your sin, your soul is being afflicted. So here we are on the ultimate day of atonement, Jubilee. If you're bogged down by your sin, you're on the right path. You're aware of it. Praise God. And whatsoever soul it be that does any work in that same day, the same soul will, will I destroy from among his people. You shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. It shall be to you a Sabbath of rest and ye shall afflict your souls. And that, here it is. This is why I think it's September 26th. <laughs> And, and again, I'm reading this, I'm studying this, and this is what hit me. It shall be to you a Sabbath of rest, and you shall afflict your souls in the ninth day of the month at evening. From, from evening to evening shall you celebrate your Sabbath. That's the Sabbath rest, that ninth day day. So it says the 10th day of the seventh month is the day of atonement. So, but God, you know, these are words in red. This is the Lord speaking to Moses. 
in the ninth day of the month at evening. So listen, the simple math. Now, again, Brother Mike Repo, man, he's got it at September 14th. So we could go September 23rd, September 24th. It's in play. I'm saying that new moon was the 17th. So when you say 17th is Tishri 1, now you got 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So that's where I'm getting the 26. And this ninth day thing kind of like confirmed it to me. Because we could just say, oh, 17 plus 10 is 27. And that's why I said 27 in the last video. So again, 24, 25, 26, 27. It's going to happen. Whatever is the true day of atonement, the true jubilee, we'll go on that day. I'm telling you, guaranteed, we're going. Okay, now get this. This is where more juice just went crazy. I, Lord, please help me with this. <sighs> okay. From evening to evening shall you celebrate your Sabbath. And the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to the children of Israel saying, the 15th day of the seventh month shall be the feast of tabernacles for seven days to the Lord. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation to you, and you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. It is a solemn assembly, and you shall do no servile work there. So seven days, they have to make an offering by fire. Think seven-year tribulation. If we go on the Day of Atonement, right? Now you got a five-day window. So let's just say we get raptured on September 26th. That means technically the tribulation could start on October 1st which would, in theory, be tabernacles. Just stay with me on this one. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire to the Lord. So this is the typology of it. All right, verse 37, 23, 37. Oh, here it is. This is the verse I was looking for earlier. <laughs> These are the feasts of the Lord which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, dress rehearsals, set apart days, because they're appointments when the real comes. These are the feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Now get this, to offer an offering made by fire to the Lord, a burnt offering, a meat offering, a sacrifice, and a drink offering, everything upon its day. So as I'm reading this, and again, I could be wrong, this, if it's tribulation typology, look at it. Fire, fire judgment, we know the day of the Lord is a judgment of fire. A burnt offering, people are gonna be burnt by the sun. Nobody can argue that, burnt by the moon. A meat offering, a sacrifice, a drink offering. What's, what's there going to be a shortage of? <laughs> Meat, drink, food, a sacrifice. So I'm telling you what I got in my spirit was they're going to be offering themselves for seven years, the seven days an offering by fire to the Lord. So themselves it's going to be like the meat, the drink offering, because they're not going to have any meat. They're not going to have any drink, the whole thing. All the stuff that pertains to the tribulation. 38, now you got to stay with me. Beside the Sabbaths of the Lord and beside your gifts and beside all your vows and beside all your free will offerings, which you give to the Lord. So he's saying, you're going to make those offerings by fire, burnt meat, sacrifice, drinks, besides your other ones, besides your gifts, besides your vows, besides your free will offerings. So it's all of it during these seven days of tabernacle. 
But here's the kicker. Look at verse 39. Why does God do this again? Why does he do this again? Praise God, people. Christian, look at this. He says, words in red, also in the 15th day of the seventh month, now he's going back right to the beginning of tabernacles again. Why? It all hit me. It could be wrong. I think it's right. Also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, summer fruit, Amos chapter eight, one and two, Micah chapter seven, one and two. Here's our summer fruit. This is us. This is us. God says also to show that it's us. They have to sacrifice meat, drink, burnt, fire. Look at this. I'm telling you all glory to God. I, I pray this is right because it lit me up right now. Also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, it's already gathered. When you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast to the Lord seven days. This is the good side of it. The fruit is gathered seven years. We're going to keep a feast of the Lord. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, a rest. And on the eighth day shall be a rest. Listen, the eighth day is, is John the Baptist. He's the eighth son of the barren woman. That is the millennial kingdom, the, the, the new beginning of rest. Praise God. A Sabbath rest, a thousand years. Days like a thousand years, a thousand years is like a day. Stay with me. Verse 40. And you shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees. There's our word goodly. Hold on to it. And you shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and the boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. What does this verse mean? Oh, praise God. I, I didn't even write it all down. I'm gonna pull it up right here. I'm gonna pull it up right here. This is when I had to turn on the camera. Verse 40, this verse 40 is unbelievable. It's just as big as Leviticus 25, nine. All right, Father, help me. Now, I hope you're with me, stay with me. And you shall take, you shall take you on the first day. You shall take is word 3947. Do you know what this means? This means to take to carry, to seize. It means take a wife, taken in marriage. Are you with me? This is what that word means. We read it and say, and you shall take on the first day. We don't think nothing of it in the English. And you shall take is 3947. It means take a wife. Look what it says on the first day. So on the first day after the judgment seat of Christ, we will marry the Lord. Do you get this? And then we're gonna have a seven day celebration. It's perfect. And you shall take you on the first day, the boughs of goodly trees. All right, this is completely nuts. Uh, where'd I write this down? I don't even know where I wrote this down. I got to look it up on here. The boughs is 6529. This will blow you away. I did write this down. I know it's somewhere because now I remember it. Just stay with me. This will blow your mind. Absolutely blow your mind. How did I not write? Here it is right here in front of me. What an idiot. I didn't write the word bows. That's why I couldn't see it. 6529. We read this. We don't know what it means. And you shall take to you on the first day the bows 
of goodly trees? What does that mean? Boughs means fruit. Fruit. That's what the word means. It should be fruit of goodly trees. They put boughs in there, which is only translated boughs like one time. The word is fruit. It's peri. Let's see what it says. Strong's age, 6529. Peri. 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 <laughs> Praise God. Listen to me. It doesn't just mean fruit. It means offspring. It means children of the womb. That's what it means. So if I'm right in this typology, 15th day of the seventh month, when you've gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep an appointment of feast to the Lord seven days. And on the first day will be rest. The eighth day will be rest. And you shall take you on the first day, the offspring of the womb of goodly trees. Our word goodly is beautiful. The shine forth is the dawn, the brilliancy of sound. We were changed by the sound of the voice of the Lord to be pleasing, to be made beautiful. Praise God. Revelation 19, to be bright as the sun, glorified bodies in this word bow oh, of the goodly trees. Listen, goodly here is, is a little bit different word. It means glorious, splendor, majesty, the offspring. It means, listen, the word bow means children of the womb. Children of the womb of goodly trees. All right, now I didn't, okay, I did write down some of this. Now look at this. And you shall take to you on the first day. See, we get married on the first day. You shall take, take a wife, taken in marriage, seized. So on the first day, we get married. And then the fruit of the womb, the goodly trees, the branches of the palm trees. I thought, what do the branches of the palm trees mean? It'll blow you away. The branches... Okay, the branches is the hand, it's the palm, it's the hollow of the hand. So actually, it's the flat of the hand. So of the hand of the palm trees, I, I didn't even dig anything else out of that. That's not the one. So there's... 3709, I guarantee there's something in there, but I did not dig that one out. I gotta figure this out. Hold on, I gotta go back to the word goodly. 1926, goodly. The root word is 1921. Okay, the root word of goodly is to honor, to adorn, to glorify, to be made high. So that's the word goodly. And by the way, now that it pops in my head, Matthew 13, you just got to trust me, go to it. Matthew 13, I believe it's 46 and 47. It says the merchant man was seeking goodly pearls. And when he found the one pearl of great price, he sold all that he had and he purchased it. Goodly, that's the word. Okay, this this trees, long story short, to tighten this up, let me get back. The branches, so the branches, I didn't dig anything out of, like I just said. It, it means the palm of the hand, and I tried to, you know, Jesus got pierced in the palm of the hand, but I don't know if that applies here. Of the palm trees, the thick trees, Listen, the thick trees, and you shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of the palm trees. Now, this is just different fruit. And the boughs of the thick trees. That second word, boughs, is a completely different word. It's a different word. Why would, why would we see boughs twice in a verse, and it's different words? So the first bow is 6529. The second one is 6057. So that means 
a branch, it means a covering. So they're covered and the boughs of thick trees. Long story short, I'm telling you, and again, I was in the middle of the study, so this is why I'm a little scrambled. You got to forgive me and be patient with me. Thick trees means dense, thick trees. So it means what you think it is, four-time usage. But I'm telling you, you got to look it up. It means interwoven, interwoven. And then when you look at Ezekiel 20, 28, for when I had brought them into the land for the which I lifted up my hand to give it to them, then they saw every high hill and all the thick trees, and they offered their sacrifices there, and there, there they presented the provocation of their offspring. There also they made their sweet savor and poured out their drink offerings. I'm telling you, the thick trees interwoven, the, the word means four times, it means the hybrids. It means the mighty men, the men of renown. So that's what it means. When God, when you see the verses in the Old Testament, oh, you make your sacrifices under the trees, under the trees on the hill, it means you're worshiping the demons, the fallen angels, the mighty men. So God's saying, and you shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees. You will marry the boughs, okay? The offspring, you will, listen to me, you've got to hear this. You'll marry the offspring of the womb. We're being shot forth out of the womb. Mother Jerusalem, Sarah, is now finally producing. The rapture is a birth. Revelation 12, 5. That's what it means. God's going to marry us on the first day. The boughs of goodly trees, splendor, brilliant, the whole thing. So branches of palm trees and the boughs of thick trees and willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. This is the whole thing. I'm telling you, look, I got a little scrambled there, I'll admit, but you can understand it. You can understand it. So Hebrews 12, 23, that's what it is. It's Hebrews 12, 23. And we broke this down before. But you are come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. No mistake about what he's talking about here. And to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. This little reference in Leviticus 2340 is us and the hybrids that made it. Why? Because they're the only ones up there. You got the 144,000, they're gonna be back down on earth doing a job. The only ones up there at this point are the spirits that Jesus preached to in prison. Do you see it now? They're the only ones up there with the angels, a numerable company of angels, the spirits of just men, the church of the firstborn, the general assembly. So listen, I don't think the 144,000 come down on day one, so they'll probably be up there for this, but then they'll get sent away. I'm telling you the typology in this. First, the Feast of Tabernacles says you got to offer offers by fire, burn offering, meat offering, sacrifice, drink offering. Verse 39, also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast of the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath. Eight days shall be a Sabbath. And you shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees branches of palm trees and the boughs of thick trees. I'm telling you, that's the hybrids and willows of the brook. And, and those are the willow trees. Also a different category of people. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. We'll literally be in the presence of him 
while tribulations going on down here, we'll be in the presence of him during tabernacles. So all glory to God. I'm telling you, and again, I turned this camera on because I was in the middle of it. So it got a little choppy at the end, but you got the gist of it. I think I've repeated myself enough. So praise God. We're going on Jubilee, probably the 26th, and I don't, whatever the day is, that's the day we're going. So whenever Tishri 1 was on that evening of the 9th into the 10th, we're going to be raptured. So please, Christian, rejoice. Mocker and scoffer, repent. You're going to end up in the tribulation. It doesn't matter. I'm telling you, oh, jubilee, one time to rule, all the rest, you'll veil. This is God teaching us how to rightly divide this. So... And listen, those, the boughs of goodly trees, palm trees. Okay, let me look up palm trees. Let me just look it up. I, I, I turned the camera on a little bit premature. I should have dug out every drop of this. It's 8558. Now it means palm tree, means date palm. Look at, look at this. It's 12 times. Man, what if the palm tree is all the Messianic Jews from the 12 tribes of Israel, because we know there's Jewish Christians, Messianic Jews. It means to be erect, a palm tree, upright, upright. I mean, praise God, praise God. This is unbelievable. It's all unbelievable. Look at this. It's associated with a town situated in the southern borders of Palestine, which is Israel. They called it Palestine because it was Palestine for almost 2,000 years. So anyway, Leviticus 2340, all prophetic. That's us up in heaven. And again, the summer fruit have gathered in the fruit of the land. See, it's all the fruit. It's all different races of people, all of it, the dead in Christ. So it's all encompassed. Praise God. I'm going to post this video and we are going and I'm going to try to do one more video and take you on a, a rapture ride in a different way just so you can have the knowledge. It's everything I've already said, but I'm gonna try to put it together. So praise God if I can do it. The four corners of the earth will be in heaven, tabernacle. Look, we'll be in heaven tabernacling with God for seven years, the seven days. That makes sense. I don't even know if we've ever thought of that before. You know, we got tabernacles at the end for the millennial reign and maybe even into eternity, God tabernacling with man. If we go on the day of atonement and there's a five-day gap and then tribulation starts, they'll be sacrificing by fire themselves. We'll be up there with all the different people, the trees, the mighty men. I'm telling you, this makes sense. Oh, praise God. All right, all glory to God. It is what it is. God bless you. I love you. We're going.